Welcome, my name is Jeff Smith. I'm product manager for Oracle SQL Developer, and today I'm going to show you how to use the new create and edit table dialogues in Oracle SQL Developer Web. SQL Developer Web is a browser-based version of the tool you may have already used on your desktop, Oracle SQL Developer. It's powered by ORDS, Oracle REST Data Services. Again, it runs right in your browser. Today it's available for our Oracle Database Cloud database as a service customers. So as you log into your dashboard, if you have the correct patch uh, available, SQL Developer Web is there for you to use. And it offers a SQL worksheet for running queries. We have all of the features you would come to expect from using our desktop. So you can drag and drop from a browser to generate code. You have code insight, you have code generation features. A lot of the same keyboard shortcuts and tips and tricks are all there. But what I want to talk about today is not running a query or running a DDL command uh, manually using the worksheet, but one of the graphical user interfaces we've provided, and that is creating and editing existing tables. In the version that's live today, uh, in order to access the new table dialog, you need to have at least one table in your schema already. If you don't, simply create a dummy table in the worksheet. We can drop it later in a update for SQL Developer Web that's due shortly. There'll be a new toolbar button here with a plus sign on it that you can use to access what I'm about to show you. But in the version that's live in the cloud today, you simply right click on an existing table and you can access now the new table dialog. All right, so by default, we're gonna create this table in the existing schema or the schema that you're logged in as. We'll need to give it a new name. Please don't take this exercise as an example of proper database design or normal forms or data modeling. I'm just gonna show you the mechanics of the dialog itself. So let's add a few columns to this table. I'm going to select the column I want to update the properties for, and then I'm not going to type up here. I'm going to find the inputs directly below. So we'll call this column an ID. We'll make it a type integer. I do believe in documenting your metadata, so we'll say um, for now the And we'll then go to column two. Oops, we also, I want that to be the primary key, so I'll toggle that on. Column two, make that their name. I want them to have a pretty liberal amount of space for names. We'll say 256. Of course, as soon as I do that, um, we'll find someone whose name needs 257 characters. Thankfully, that's pretty easy to change later. Again, this is a really bad example, so this is going to be person's first, middle, and last names in a single string. We'll say uh, birth date. We don't need to know the fraction of a second of their date of birth. So date will work just fine day and time of birth. Oh, I want these to not be case sensitive, so birth date. All right, and column four, let's say this is there. Um, let's see, so we've got a string, a number, and a date. Uh, let's have a picture. By Pick. Let's just call it picture. And this will be a blob. A picture of the peep. All right. So here we have the uh, four columns for the table peeps. I have a primary key. Uh, I want their name. Let's go look at the properties of the primary key. So um, by default, 
the uh, primary key um, constraint name is peeps pk. We can change that. We can change various properties of the primary key. Right now it's just the ID field. If I wanted it to be uh, multiple attributes, I could simply select this and drag it over to the right. Unique keys, we don't have any. Uh, indexes, we'll get one automatically on the primary key. I think for now I'm fine with that. Uh, I'm not ready to relate this to other objects yet. Table constraints, I could have a check constraint here. So let's build one of those. So again, I select the item, I come down below, I give it the name. So let's have this constraint. Um, let's call it this B date greater than 1900. And this is going to be the check constraint condition. So we're going to say. Oh, what did we call the column? Birth date. Make sure that's active. Birth date is greater than to date. One one nineteen hundred. And that would be D D M M Y Y Y what comments. This is just a open field of text. This is a table to store our peeps. Storage you can set the um type here. So index that would be an index or an IoT table. By default we do heaps and oracle. A table space. Uh, by default, this user is writing to users, but if we wanted to be explicit, we could do that. Uh, logging, that says, do we want uh, changes to the table, the data? Do we want that to be logged for uh, backup recovery? You almost always want that to be yes. Here's the fun part. So here's the DDL that we've generated based on what you've inputted in the dialog so far. So we have creating the table. We have our comments, and then we have two alter dialogs. We have one for defining the primary key, and we have one for that check constraint. We can come in here and make any changes we'd like. I'm going to click the Create button and see what happens. So here's the output from our work. The table was created. Our comments were added. And my two check constraints have come in. All right. Um, the dialog is still open. So I can see what I've done. I'm going to click close now. Let's refresh our table page. So I have peeps here. I can expand that. Now let's right click and say edit. So here's the same dialog. Uh, all of the metadata has been loaded. I want to make a change. Let's add a column. Again, this is going to be a very silly example, but let's call this address. We're going to make this very long. The complete address in a single field. Again, you would never do this in the real world. Let's come here and look at the DDL page again. Now by default, we have the update page showing uh, the commands that will be issued when I click the apply button. Let's see what happens when we click on the create dialog. On the create dialog, we have the updated um, complete data model in the DDL format. So this is what the table would look like um, if we were creating the table from scratch. The update uh, dialog shows the actual um, commands that are going to be issued against the table when I click apply. Let's do that. So it toggles over to output. I have my output now. Let's make another change. Let's come back to the columns list. Let's make a mistake. 
I know that's not going to happen for you guys because you're perfect, but I'm not the best uh, computer user. Let's call this uh, let's call this column name place of birth. Again, very bad model. Uh, we're going to say four thousand city, state, or province country of place of birth. So at least my data modeling skills are horrible, but I do properly document my attributes and columns. Let's go to the DDL page. Look what it's done. It's quoted my text for me. So let's come back to my columns page. I wanted to make a boo-boo. So let's make another type of mistake. Let's make this 33,000, which is crazy. And uh, by the way, I hate spaces and column names. Let's come back to the DDL page. There we go. So no spaces. So I've avoided that mistake, but I've basically created another mistake. Because even with extended Veracares enabled in your database, um, the max size is 32K, which is less than 33,000. So let's click the Apply button. Uh-oh, so it's failed just like I predicted it would. So this is the nice thing about this dialog. The dialog's still active. I can come back to the Columns page, find the problem where I had the mistake, correct it. Let's back this down to 4,000. Click on the DDL. This looks correct. Click Apply. And we can see that our object is complete. So let's close this. Let's refresh our list again. And here is the peeps object. And if we want to do a select from it, I can simply create some white space available for a drag and drop. And I can do a select statement. And here is the um, SQL code I need to start working with this table. Thanks everyone for your time today. Uh, I did not have uh, the chance to show you use this template, but that allows you to take an existing table and create a copy of it to a new name. I want to keep these videos under 10 minutes, and uh, I think that's enough for you to get going with. Thanks everyone for your time today, and we hope to see you soon.